today we're going to be rolling through <coughs> module 13, which deals with volume, comb, cylinders, and spheres. We're going to wrap around through it real quick, finish up. Might even have time for some delicious ice cream. That's another reason <coughs> ice cream is delicious. All right, today we'll understand how to identify the volume of a cylinder, cone, and a sphere, also known as solids. We will then apply this to real world problems and situations. Don't worry, that's not on your sheet. Okay. This is. Now, first and foremost, in order to understand this, I want to make sure we are refreshed on terms. When I have a circle, we're talking about the diameter. You tell me when this line should stop. turn it, it would still be a straight line. It basically cuts the circle into two parts. If we said this diameter was 10 inches, we're looking at the, yeah, because I want you guys to remember what diameter is. The radius is half of the diameter. So once again, radius, we're going to stretch. Where should it stop? Right there? No. no. Right about no. there. Yes. 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 Somewhere in the middle. Right about there. Half. We'll call those circle dot right there. And what should the length, if we're talking about the same circle here, what should the length of this be? Five. Five. 10 divided by 2, which yes equals five. 5. So the radius is simply half of the diameter. The reason I tell you that is because the problems dealing with today, some of them will give you the diameter, <laughs> some of them will give you the radius. The most common mistake I've seen is students forget to take the diameter and chop it in half. And the only thing we're using these formulas, the only thing that we're using these formulas is the radius. So if you're given the diameter, you have to remember before you start solving it, you have to take that diameter, chop, 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 chop it in half. First formula, dealing with a cylinder. Here's the formula right here. Volume is equal to pi. What number do we use for pi? What number do we always use for pi? 3.14. So volume is equal to 3.14 times the radius squared times the height. That is the formula for a cylinder. So once again, what is pi? 3.14. Do we know the radius here, yes or no? Looking at this. A line. Does it stretch all the way across the circle or halfway through? Uh, halfway. So that is my radius. radius. Yes, we know the radius. What's the radius? Three. It is three. Do we know the height here of the cylinder? Yes, yes. or no? Yes. yes. What is it? Ten. ten. Yes, it is ten. Once you identify all this stuff, you're simply substituting these values into your formula. So V is going to equal parentheses, shows multiplication because we're multiplying everything out. 3.14 times the radius squared, 3 squared times the height, which is 10. What is 3 squared, guys? 9. nine. nine. So we'll do 3.14 times 9 times 10. We'll multiply straight across. So somebody do me a favor. Multiply the whole thing to the nearest 10. What do you get when you multiply 3.14 times 9 times 10? Anybody? To the nearest 10? 282, Francesca, what was it? 282.6. What am I missing? Uh, it's inches, so it's going to be inches cubed. Remember, all of them are in cubic units. You're simply substituting these values in. The only thing that may slightly differ on occasion is what if we knew the volume, but we didn't know the height? Let's say this is x. Right, I told you the volume was equal to 282.6. Could you go back and solve for the height, yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes you could. The only difference is we'd be setting it up like this now. We know the volume, 282.6 is equal to, pi doesn't change, 3.14. I'm gonna show you what would happen if we did it this way. 3.14, and do we still know the radius? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do, 3.14 times, 3 squared times, what are we trying to find? X. X, or the height, right? We could use H or X, I'll call it H for the height. We do the multiplication here, and I'm gonna get 282, that's a two, 0.6 is equal to, what's 3.14 times nine, anybody? 
3.14 times 9 because we're squaring 3. What's 3.14 times 8? 28.26. 28.26 times 28 H becomes 28.26 H. What would you do to finish solving this problem? Divide. Divide both sides by 28.26. What magical number do you think we're getting here? 3. 10. 10, because we already knew the height equals 10. That's how you would do it. That's the only thing you might see different on occasion. You might be given the volume and be asked to find the height or the radius. Simply substitute the values you know, solve for the one value that's missing. Questions on this? No? Formula. This is for the volume of a cone. It's the exact same thing as a cylinder, except we take our answer, we divide it by three. three. It's the exact same thing. So once again, what is pi? 3.14. 3.14. Are we getting the radius here, yes or no? Yes. Yes. What's my radius? Two. two. Yes, my radius okay. is two. What's the height of the cone? Three. 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 We substitute these in to our formula, and we get I'll write the formula here. V is equal to 3.14 times <coughs> 2 squared times 3 divided by 3. When you multiply this all out on top, you'll get 3.14. This becomes 4. We'll do that. 14 times 4 times 3 over 3. Do the multiplication up top, you should get 37.18. Is that what you got? 37.68. You divide that by 3 and you'll get 12.56. And if you rounded that, if you rounded that to the nearest tenth, not that we had to, you would have gotten oh, it's the nearest tenth, 12.6. 12.6 would be your answer. Remember to round up. Same formula, you're simply dividing by three at the end. Any questions on this one? Are we good on this one? Yeah. What's the only additional step? Divide by three. 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 What's up? Oh, okay. So, sphere is the last one. This is the formula for sphere. It's four times pi radius cubed. You'd be surprised how many people forget the cube here. They're so used to squaring. Pi, radius cubed, divided by 3. Once you do that, you multiply by 4. So looking at the sphere here, do we know the radius of the sphere, yes or no? Yes. What's the radius? 2.1. 2.1. And I'm sure we know what pi is, right? What's pi? 3.14. 3.14. Let me show you what this is going to look like. Volume <coughs> is equal to 4. It's 4 on the outside. Parentheses, 3.14. Everybody always tries to square the radius here. Here is the only place you're cubing the radius. 2.1 cubed Would you round it? divided by 3. Actually, hold on, let me fix this. 2.1, 3. We do what's inside the parentheses first. So, somebody, what's 2.1 cubed? <coughs> 9.261. We don't round till the end. Is that the full answer? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we don't round till the end, kids. Don't forget the four out here. Okay, so do me a favor. Somebody do the multiplication up top. What's 3.14 times 9.261? Hold on, Francesca, what is it? 29.079. 07954 divided, divided, divided by 3. Oh what is 29.07954 divided by 3? <coughs> well, we don't we'll round until the very end. Nine yes, Francesca, what is it? 9.61. Hold on, sorry, 9.61. Nine nine. Okay, 9.69. 318. We multiply that by 4 and now round to the nearest tenth. What do you get? 38.8. You never round until the very end. And don't forget, we're talking about cubic centimeters. Any questions on this? You're simply substituting it in. It just takes a little bit of practice. This is the hardest one, yeah. And you have to be careful, never round until the very end.
Yeah. yeah, but you're really just memorizing this, right? Yeah. Four pi. The only thing that's really different here is this. We're not squaring that. We are uh, cubing it.